So in this lesson, we will be putting everything together that we have learned so far in this first unit. So let me clear my screen. Now, whenever I show you something new, I will use the console or the interpreter on this side. However, when it's time to put everything together and to implement what we have learned, I will switch over here to the editor. Okay, so this is where we actually write our code and save it as a file so that we can use it later. So the editor will tell me what version of Python here, Python 3, all right? Um, these are my comments, all right? Comments are simply things that remind me what the program does. Python does not care about these. These are for humans, all right? Okay, so let's get rid of this for now. And let's put a comment. Um, to create a comment, we use the octotwerp, okay, or the pong sign, or the hash sign. And I will say what this program does. So this program will put together everything that we have learned in unit number one, All right? So Python doesn't care about the comments, right? It ignores them, okay? And this applies to all languages as well. So it doesn't matter if later on you learn another language. Once you use comments in those languages, the, the, the language ignores them. Okay? Great. So the way you write a program, you sort of brainstorm what you want to do. Right? And what I do is I use comments to help me uh, pinpoint to help me map out what I want to do. So the first thing I would want to do, um, all right, um, let's say, um, let's ask the user for their name. Okay, and the next thing I would want to do is um, ask the user for their age, okay? And then what I want to do is tell the user how old they will, or let's say tell the user when uh, they were born, okay? So, we have the things that we want to accomplish. So, all we do now is to fill in the comments with actual code. So, how do I ask the user for their name? Well, that seems straightforward enough. We need to create a variable. So, let's say user underscore name will be input. Enter your name, a colon, and a space. Okay, that seems easy enough. All right. So, the next thing we need to do is to ask the user for their age. That seems easy enough. So, we're going to say user underscore age. And we're going to say input. Enter your age, colon, the space. Seems straightforward enough. Now I need to tell the user um, when they were born. All right, so I need to print to the console 
when they were born. But for me to do that, I need to calculate when they were born. So I think I need another comment. So I'm going to say calculate when the user was born. So I need to do that before I actually tell them when they were born. Alright? So how would I calculate when the user was born? Uh, well, we need a year um, that we're going to use as the base year. So since this is 2020, we will use 2020 as our base year. So what we will do, uh, we will, uh, to compute or to calculate the year the user was born, we subtract the user's age from 2020. Okay? So that seems straightforward enough. So we're going to say user underscore year, right? Or user underscore born year will be 2020 minus user underscore age. Right? Now, if we proceed any further, we will run into an error. Right? Why will we run into an error? Well, if you recall, user age is a string. And if I go ahead and say 2020 minus a string, a number minus a string, Python will give us an error. So this is easy enough to fix. All I need to do is to tell Python, Python, I will convert this to an integer. And so now it should work. Okay? Now, finally, I can print the year that the user was born. So, I will say um, print. You, uh, what's the name of the user? Okay, we'll put that there. So, if the user is named Jane, we're going to say Jane, comma, you were born in and we're going to put the year. Full stop. Okay? So now, we need to tell Python what variables will replace this curly brace and this curly brace. So there are two curly braces that need to be replaced. So I'm going to say that, of course. Um, since in most cases we might run out of space, I'm going to do enter, and then I'm going to put the dot on the next line. So I'm going to say format, open, and now I'm going to put the variable that will replace this first one. Remember, we have to do it in order. So the name of the person will come first, so I have to put that first. User underscore name. Now, a comma will separate the first variable from the next one. So whenever we have multiple variables, we separate them with a, with a comma. So this one will be the year, the year we calculated, which is this variable here. Okay. So I'm going to say, uh, comma, user underscore born underscore year. Okay. Okay, and of course, we never know if our program will work unless we actually run it or execute it. And so once our program has been saved, well actually we haven't saved it, so let's save it. We can click on this here. Okay, 
let's save it. Um, you can maybe save it on your desktop. All right. All right, and let's call it. Um, you let's call it um, user underscore year. But one thing to remember, we must always save our Python programs with a dot py extension. Okay, so always put the name of the program followed by a dot and followed by a py. And so I'm gonna click on save. And of course, the name here tells me that it has been saved. All right. So to run this program, I will click this green button up here. Okay. So when I click play, I will see the results come on the console. If there are errors, they will also be shown on the console. So let's find out. Play. All right. Enter your name. Okay. Let's say my name is Jane. I'm going to press enter. What is my age? Let's say I'm 40 years old. Or let's say 41. And it tells me, Jane, you were born in 1979. Okay? So, this is a very fundamental program because it illustrates all the things that you will be doing when it comes to programming. It doesn't matter how big your programs are. It will always be about getting input. It will always be about manipulating that input like we did on line 14. And it will always be about saving that output or displaying that output to the user as we did on line 16. Okay, so every program you write will have these three ingredients. Input, computation, and output. Of course, they will take different forms. Okay. All right. So this uh, concludes unit one, uh, where you learn the basics of programming. In the next video I will be discussing a problem that I would like for you to work on so that you practice the skills that you have learned. After you have successfully completed that practice problem then you can move on to unit 2. Great! I'll see you in the next unit.